So Phil, can we start off by you telling me a little bit about the big data initiative that you're working on? Okay, so the big data is really just part of what it is I do at uh, NIH. So it's really uh, a recognition that data in general, in fact, uh, is, is becoming increasingly important to the biomedical enterprise. And it's more than just data, it's really all aspects of the research life cycle uh, that are in digital form. So it's, you know, it goes from how we might make notes in a lab notebook to uh, data that we collect from experiments to things that we've scanned which are now in digital form to software we run to analyze uh, through to you know some kind of narrative which is typically a paper but it could be other things entries in a database that's a whole sort of digital continuum now and uh, you know how we manage and utilize to the fullest the digital continuum to uh, to sort of facilitate discovery at the, the, the least cost. And what is the goal of the, the discovery? What are you trying to create out of this? Well, the, the National Institutes of Health comprises 27 different institutes and centers, all geared around uh, given diseases, different organs, um, and collectively, uh, you know, it forms uh, the basis of, uh, of improvements to healthcare across essentially every imaginable uh, condition, whether it be something as major as can different types of cancer. So the National Cancer Institute is the biggest institute at NIH, uh, down to you know, orphan diseases, uh, dental uh, institute, and so forth. And what is your division working on? Is there a specific disease that you're targeting? No, we're, we're what's called trans-NIH. So uh, the Office of the Director essentially oversees all of those 27 institutes and centers. And our goal is essentially to create interoperability, actually, between these entities because, I mean, it, what, in some ways they make less sense than they did years ago because some uh, data or some discovery associated with a given disease or condition undoubtedly, because of the complexity of living systems, uh, has an effect on, you know, is relevant to some other condition. So this crosstalk... Uh, is becoming increasingly important and you know we see data as the catalyst to create that crosstalk across uh, th these respective institutes. And what would you say have been the biggest challenges you've encountered since taking on this position? Probably some of the NIH bureaucracy uh, but uh, I, what I would say is that the that, I mean what's interesting is universally everybody is pulling towards the same common goal. Uh, these are people, the people who work at NIH are people who, you know, some of them, have, including myself, have their, our own research programs. But our major focus is on sort of promoting and facilitating the research of others. So, you know, I think there's a, there's a lot of effort in that direction and everybody pulls together. So that, uh, and I've just, it's just been a pleasure to, to work in that environment. And does such an infrastructure exist to allow for easy sharing of this data? No. Um, there, there are the beginnings of policies that facilitate sharing. And this goes beyond the NIH. This is actually a directive from the Office of the President. So there's a, there has been a series of initiatives to uh, improve public access to, uh, you know, to data that's generated by the federal government. And that includes, of course, all the research that they fund. So, you know, a little over a year ago, there was, I think it was, it was a Holdren memo which describes um, data, data sharing policies that need to be in place across, across the whole of, uh, of the federal government. So that includes the NIH, but beyond that, it's all the other divisions of Health and Human Services, which includes, includes the you know, Centers for Disease Control, uh, the FDA, and so forth. Well, thank you so much, sir, for a your pleasure. time. pleasure.